Welcome back to Kato Living. We are joined now with author Rachel. Rachel, I forgot to say this off camera, but I know you. I went to school at MSU and you were one of my advisors before. So it's really interesting to see that we've come to this point now, like years later, and talking about one of the books that you've created. And this was really something special to hear about from Nick when he first talked about that this was happening and that you had created this. Because the story itself is so fascinating. So if you could just give a synopsis for someone who doesn't mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. what is this book? Yes, so Camilla Hall was a member of the Symbionese Liberation Army and we're really in a milestone year right now because it's been 50 years mm. since the major events of the SLA. And if people kind of know or if they just wanted the brief overview, the SLA is most infamous for kidnapping at the time 19 year old Patricia Hearst and if you know the Hearst name she was part of the Hearst family the Hearst media empire mm. so when they kidnapped her in February of, of 1974 to bring more attention to their cause it just it, it grabbed headlines worldwide because it was just so crazy that they mm -hmm. had kidnapped this young woman mm -hmm. um, so that's really what the SLA is is most known for um, but Camilla was a member of the group when they did the kidnapping, and she grew up in St. Peter. Her father was a uh, theology professor at Gustavus Adolphus College. Her mom helped start the art department there. Um, so to know that somebody who was part of this really notorious organization had spent the first 10, 12 years of her life in St. Peter mm -hmm. as the daughter of a pastor um, just really makes her story fascinating and really full of mystery of how mm. she ended up with this group. Yeah, and so how do you um, how do you see uh, I guess like what types of things um, do you discuss in in this book? Yes. So in 1974, when all of that was happening, there was the kidnapping, there was a bank robbery, and then Camilla uh, died in a shootout with police with five other members in May 1974. So at that time group was really dismissed you know uh, in the media portraits they were crazy radicals and just doing these weird things and I really wanted to use this book to talk a little bit more about her life mm. because surely she was not crazy her entire <laughs> life right. right like she had a, a childhood and a loving family so what what could have caused her to make those choices later in her life so I really feel like this book is trying to unravel the mystery of how she might have made the decisions that she made. That must take a lot of research to find and get into. How did you even start tackling a project like that? Yes, well thankfully at Gustavus uh, her father had left quite a few documents mm. um, because of his long relationship with Gustavus. So I started there, there was quite a bit there and then over time it's like unraveling a thread one thing leads yeah. to another, other people kind of pop up and say oh I knew her and so you can talk to some people um, but it really was a long process I had started the book uh, started researching in 1999 mm. and it was published in 2022 so you can do the math <laughs> uh, it was a very long time of doing all of the work and so, it must be hard also like distinguishing between like what's folklore <laughs> and yes. rumors versus what is actual truth about her life and her family's life right exactly yes so to just really try to delve into those you know primary source documents uh, there were a lot of letters that she had written so it was really nice to be able to go to documents where she herself is writing letters to her parents mm -hmm. and you can really start to see her thought process there. And I think, you know, um, especially about people that uh, we're kind of entering this weird phase where people from that era, you know, are passing on. Mm -hmm. So what was, um, is Camilla still alive? Like what was the, like what's the timeline on yeah. this? Yeah, so she did die in that shootout in May 1974 along with five other members. And so that's what made this book even a little bit more trickier mm -hmm. to write because the people who knew her well, at least at the very end of her life, they all had died as well. Um, so to try to find information about those last few months, a um, little bit more tricky. I had to try to fill in some gaps there. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly we are at a time period where where people who were alive in 1974, or even trying to, people who knew what was going on mm -hmm. in 1974, like they are getting older. And so yeah. I'm, I'm meeting a lot of audiences who, you know, this is kind of new information to them. That's All right. LA. Well, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. And still to come on Cato Living, we're turning the page on one successful author who made the fantasy genre relevant and popular to this day.